Our planet, a vibrant tapestry of life, has, over millennia, witnessed the rise and fall of countless species. Many of these creatures, magnificent and mysterious, have vanished into the mists of time, leaving behind only whispers in the fossil record or fleeting mentions in the annals of human history. Today, we're uncovering 10 extinct animals you've probably never heard of. These are not the titans of prehistoric fame like the Tyrannosaurus Rex or the Woolly Mammoth, but rather unique beings whose stories are equally compelling. Their disappearance is often a poignant reminder of the delicate balance of nature. Prepare to journey with us into the shadows of the past to encounter creatures so strange, so wonderful, they almost seem the stuff of legend. We will explore their lives, their unique adaptations, and the circumstances, often tragic, that led to their departure from the stage of life. Each one represents a lost thread in the intricate web of biodiversity, a note silenced in the grand symphony of evolution. Their tales are cautionary, yet filled with a profound sense of wonder for the sheer inventiveness of life on Earth. Join me, Adam Buchanfer, as we delve into these forgotten chapters of natural history. We'll traverse vast oceans, dense forests, and remote islands, seeking out the spectral forms of these lost animals. The world they inhabited may be gone, but their stories resonate still, offering us a glimpse into what once was, and perhaps a deeper understanding of the preciousness of what remains. Let the exploration begin. Our first subject takes us to the frigid, nutrient-rich waters of the Bering Sea, once home to a truly remarkable marine mammal, Stellar's sea cow. Imagine, if you will, a creature of immense proportions, growing up to 9 meters in length and weighing as much as 10 tons, a true behemoth, larger than any modern Cyrenian. Discovered by Europeans in 1741 by the naturalist Georg Wilhelm Steller, who was shipwrecked on Bering Island, this colossal animal was a picture of placidity. It moved with a slow, deliberate grace through the dense kelp forests, its primary source of sustenance. These gentle giants lived in small family groups, displaying a remarkable tameness and social cohesion, often coming to the aid of injured companions, a trait that, tragically, made them easy targets. They were entirely toothless, using horny pads in their mouths to masticate the kelp. Their skin was thick and bark-like, perhaps an adaptation to the cold waters and rocky shores. Within a mere 27 years of Stellar's discovery, this magnificent creature was hunted to extinction, its numbers decimated by sailors and fur traders seeking its meat, fat, and hide. A fleeting glimpse, then gone forever. From the icy northern seas we travel south to the sun-drenched plains of South Africa, the realm of the quagga. This peculiar equine was a subspecies of the plain zebra, yet it possessed a most distinctive coat. Imagine a zebra vividly striped on its head, neck, and the front portion of its body, these bold markings gradually fading into a plain brownish hue towards its rear, its legs a creamy white. It was as if nature had begun to paint a zebra, then changed her mind halfway through the masterpiece. A truly unique pattern, unlike any other living member of the horse family. The quagga roamed the Cape Province and the southern part of the Orange Free State in vast herds, often associating with wildebeest and ostriches. They were a common sight to the early Dutch settlers, who unfortunately saw them primarily as competitors for grazing land for their livestock, and also as a source of meat and hides. Relentless hunting pressure, coupled with habitat loss, led to a rapid decline in their numbers during the 19th century. The last wild quagga is believed to have been shot in the 1870s, and the very last individual, a mare, died in captivity at the Artis Magistra Zoo in Amsterdam in 1883, her passing barely noted at the time. Our journey now takes us to the remote Galapagos Archipelago, a crucible of evolution, and to Pinta Island, once home to a unique subspecies of giant tortoise, Chelonoidus abingdoni. For many years, this particular tortoise was thought to be entirely extinct, a casualty of whalers and settlers who hunted them for food and oil, 
and the devastating impact of introduced species, particularly goats, which decimated their natural vegetation. But then, in 1971, a solitary male was discovered, a relic from a bygone era. He became known to the world as Lonesome George. For four decades, Lonesome George became an icon of conservation, a poignant symbol of species on the brink. He was the last of his kind, carrying the genetic legacy of the Pinta Island tortoises within his ancient frame. Extensive efforts were made to find a suitable mate for him, even attempting to breed him with females from closely related subspecies. But alas, no viable offspring were ever produced. With his passing in June 2012, at an estimated age of over 100 years, the Pinta Island tortoise subspecies was officially declared extinct. His story is a stark reminder of the finality of extinction and the profound loneliness of being the last. We now ascend to the rugged, formidable peaks of the Pyrenees Mountains, straddling the border of France and Spain. This was the domain of the Pyrenean ibex, a subspecies of Spanish ibex, distinguished by its long, curved horns and remarkable agility on the steep, rocky slopes. For centuries, these magnificent capriids navigated their mountainous realm, adapting to the harsh conditions. However, relentless hunting pressure over many hundreds of years, coupled with disease and competition from domestic livestock, gradually whittled down their numbers. The tale of the Pyrenean ibex takes a particularly curious and poignant turn. The last naturally born individual, a female named Celia, tragically died in January 2000, crushed by a falling tree. This marked its official extinction. But then, in an extraordinary feat of scientific endeavor, scientists attempted to resurrect the species using cloning technology. In 2003, a cloned Pyrenean ibex kid was successfully born, created from Celia's preserved cells. For a brief, fleeting moment, the species had returned. However, the clone suffered from severe lung defects and died within minutes of birth, marking the Pyrenean ibex as the first and so far only animal to have gone extinct twice. Our exploration now leads us to the cold, turbulent waters of the North Atlantic, once the domain of the Great Auk. This large, flightless seabird, standing nearly a meter tall, bore a striking superficial resemblance to the penguins of the southern hemisphere with its black back, white belly, and upright stance. However, it was not a penguin at all, but a member of the Alcidi family more closely related to razorbills and puffins. It was a powerful swimmer perfectly adapted to a life at sea, using its stubby wings to propel itself through the water in pursuit of fish. The great auk nested in dense colonies on remote, rocky islands from Canada and Greenland across to Iceland, Scandinavia, and the British Isles. Tragically, its flightlessness coupled with its habit of nesting in accessible locations made it exceptionally vulnerable to human exploitation. For centuries, it was hunted relentlessly for its meat, its eggs, which were a prized food source and its downy feathers, used for pillows and mattresses. The relentless pressure proved too much. The last confirmed breeding pair, along with their single egg, were killed on Eldi Island, off the coast of Iceland on the 3rd of July, 1844, by collectors seeking museum specimens. We journey now to the island of Tasmania, off the southern coast of Australia, a land of ancient forests and rugged wilderness, the last refuge of the Thylacine, often called the Tasmanian Tiger or Tasmanian Wolf. This was no feline, nor a canine, but a remarkable carnivorous marsupial, the largest of modern times. It possessed a wolf-like head, powerful jaws capable of an extraordinary gape, a stiff tail, and most strikingly, a series of dark transverse stripes across its lower back and rump, reminiscent of a tiger's pattern. The female, like all marsupials, had a pouch, though uniquely it opened to the rear. The thylacine was once widespread across mainland Australia and New Guinea, but competition with the dingo and human pressures led to its extinction there thousands of years ago, confining it to Tasmania. European settlers, fearing for their sheep, persecuted the thylacine relentlessly with bounties offered for its extermination. Habitat loss and perhaps disease also contributed to its decline. 
The last known wild thylacine was shot in 1930, and the last captive individual, a male named Benjamin, died in the Hobart Zoo on the 7th of September 1936, officially marking the species' extinction. Yet, whispers and alleged sightings persist, a ghostly echo in the Tasmanian wilderness. So our travels now take us to the islands of New Zealand, or Aotearoa, which is a land that until relatively recently in geological terms, was a realm ruled by birds. Towering amongst this avian assemblage were the moa, a group comprising nine species of extraordinary, flightless birds. Some species of moa were truly colossal, with the South Island giant moa, Denornis robustus, reaching heights of up to 3.6 meters, that's 12 feet tall, when stretching its neck upwards and weighing an estimated 230 kilograms. They were the dominant herbivores in New Zealand's forests, shrublands, and subalpine ecosystems. For millions of years, the moa evolved in an environment completely devoid of terrestrial mammalian predators. They possessed no wings, not even vestigial ones, and their only significant natural enemy was the equally impressive host eagle, itself now extinct. This kind of idyllic existence, though, came to an abrupt end with the arrival of the first human settlers, the Maori, around the late 13th century. For these new inhabitants, the moa represented an abundant and relatively easy source of food. Within a mere one to two centuries of human colonization, all nine species of moa were hunted to extinction, and now their bones and eggshells are pretty much the primary evidence of their once majestic presence. We now journey to the mighty Yangtze River in China, a waterway that snakes its way through the heart of a nation, and once the exclusive home of a unique freshwater cetacean, the Baiji, or Yangtze River Dolphin. This elegant creature, often referred to as the goddess of the Yangtze, possessed a long, slightly upturned beak, a pale bluish-gray skin, and very small eyes, reflecting its reliance on sophisticated echolocation to navigate the often murky waters of its riverine habitat. It was one of only a handful of true freshwater dolphin species in the world. The Baiji had graced the Yangtze for an estimated 20 million years, a living testament to the river's ancient lineage. However, the 20th century brought unprecedented pressures. Rapid industrialization, intensive fishing practices, including harmful methods like dynamite fishing and entanglement in fishing gear, heavy pollution, increased boat traffic, and the construction of massive hydrological projects like the Three Gorges Dam, all contributed to a catastrophic decline in its numbers and the degradation of its habitat. Despite conservation efforts, a rigorous survey in late 2006 failed to find a single baiji, leading to its declaration as functionally extinct, a silent victim of unchecked development. Our penultimate creature takes us back in time to the Pleistocene epoch, the Great Ice Age, a period when colossal mammals roamed the landscapes of Eurasia. Among them was Megaloceros giganteus, commonly known as the Irish elk, although it was neither exclusively Irish nor strictly speaking an elk, being more closely related to modern fallow deer. Its most breathtaking feature was its antlers, the largest of any known deer species, living or extinct. These magnificent structures could span up to 3.65 meters or 12 feet from tip to tip and weigh around 40 kilograms. Imagine this majestic animal standing two meters tall at the shoulder, bearing this enormous, ornate crown, moving through the open woodlands and parklands that characterized much of Europe and Asia during interglacial periods. The sheer size of these antlers has long fascinated scientists, likely playing a role in sexual selection, display, and ritualized combat between males. The Irish elk disappeared around 7,700 years ago. Its extinction was probably a complex interplay of factors, including climate change that altered its preferred habitat and vegetation, and increasing hunting pressure from early human populations who were undoubtedly impressed by such a magnificent quarry. For our final lost species, we fly to the skies of North America, which once echoed with the calls of its only native parrot, 
the Carolina parakeet. This was a strikingly beautiful bird, predominantly green, with a brilliant yellow head and an orange blush across its face and throat. They were highly social creatures, often seen in large, noisy flocks, feeding on seeds, fruits, and agricultural crops, particularly cockleburrs, whose toxins they seemed to sequester, possibly making them unpalatable to some predators. Their range was extensive, stretching from the southern parts of New York and the Great Lakes down to Florida, and westwards towards the eastern edge of the Great Plains. The demise of the Carolina parakeet is a particularly sad tale of multiple human impacts. Deforestation for agriculture drastically reduced its habitat and food sources. Farmers viewed them as pests and shot them in large numbers. Their vibrant feathers were sought after for ladies' hats, leading to further persecution. Tragically, their strong social bonds contributed to their downfall. When one bird was shot, the rest of the flock would often fly down to hover over their fallen companion, making them easy targets for hunters. The last confirmed wild sighting occurred in Florida in 1910, and the last captive individual named Incas died at the Cincinnati Zoo in February 1918, in the very same cage where Martha, the last passenger pigeon, had died four years earlier. And so, our journey through the shadows of extinction comes to a close. We have encountered but a few of the myriad creatures that have vanished from our world, each a unique expression of life's incredible diversity. From the gentle stellar sea cow to the vibrant Carolina parakeet, their stories are etched into the history of our planet, serving as solemn reminders of the profound impact, both direct and indirect, that humanity can have upon the natural world. The echoes of their existence challenge us to look more closely at the world around us, to appreciate the intricate web of life that still thrives. The loss of these species is not merely a historical footnote, it is a depletion of our planet's richness, a silencing of evolutionary narratives that spanned millennia. But in remembering them, in understanding the circumstances of their decline, we can perhaps find wisdom and motivation. The responsibility to protect the biodiversity that remains rests heavily upon our shoulders. The fate of countless species today hangs in the balance and their survival depends on our collective awareness, our choices, and our actions. Let these stories of the lost inspire us to become better stewards of this precious earth. Which extinct animal surprised you the most? Let us know below. Your reflections and insights are always a valuable part of this continuing exploration. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more fascinating discoveries into the wonders of the natural world, both past and present. Until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep cherishing the incredible life that surrounds us.